are live. We are live and in effect. Hope everybody's had a great week. It is Friday afternoon again already. Hope everybody's doing excellent. Hope everybody's kept their energy up. Hope everybody's gotten some positive things done for yourself and for others this week. This is the best way to do things for yourself is to do things for others. It's the fastest way to get to success. As y'all coming in, definitely leave a comment. Tell me your name and location, and we're going to get into the conversation here today. Let me, Hilly Bean, what's going on? As y'all coming in, leave a comment with your name and location, and we're going to get started in a minute. I'm going to let y'all know the topic. There it is. Y'all see what the topic is for the day. Facebook on my right, Instagram on my left. If you are checking in on, you can tell me your name and location in the comment section. Instagram, you already know the drill. Tell me your name and location in the comment section. We got in here. Core G1. Let's get it. <clears throat> Who else was that? Albing, Albaningo, Ninigo. What's good? Is y'all coming in? Let's get to it. Hillary checking in from Vancouver, BC, Canada. Shout out to Canada. We always got a we always got an active Canada uh, population here on the live. So shout out to everybody in Canada who is checking in. As y'all come in again, tell me your name and location. We getting started in 60 seconds. We ain't gonna waste too much time. It's Friday night. I know y'all got got Netflix dates to get to. I mean, you can't go to the movies, you can't go to the mall, but you can you can stream some info. You can stream something on your phone or on your tablets. Brandon from Pensacola, what's good? As y'all come in, tell me your names and location. We are getting started in 30. Seconds, I don't care who's in here, we're getting started in 30 seconds. Anybody who is late, you already know what it is. To be early is to be on time, to be on time is to be late, to be late is to be forgotten. And we are starting in 30 seconds. Hope everybody's had a great Friday. Javier from Harlem, New York. Shout out to Harlem, man. Shout out to the diplomats. Cameron, Jim Jones, Santana. As y'all come in, names and location, we're getting started in 10 seconds. Nine, eight. For those of y'all who don't know me, my name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day. I'm a former nine-year professional basketball player, played overseas, traveling through eight countries. While I was doing that, I created, uh, actually, before I even get to that, I wrote 25 books. Book 26 is on the way. I've, I am a uber publisher of content. I've done probably 2,000 of these live streams between all the, other, all the platforms that are out there. I've published over 7,000 YouTube videos, 7,000 articles, 1,500 Masterclass audios, which are some of y'all what might call that a podcast, but mine is a masterclass. And all of them, everything that I've done is all centered around this framework called Work on Your Game, which is all about taking a pro athlete mindset and teaching how you apply that mindset to your business and your life. I also wrote a book about it. If you haven't read this book, this book will give you my entire framework in 250 pages. Now, I got a bunch of books that get into more granular, detailed stuff, but this gives you the entire framework in 250 pages right here if you want to know about that. And this framework is all about getting your mind in the right place. What we, what we have going on the inside will control what happens on the outside. And some of you who are just trying to figure out, sometimes when people ask me what I do, you know, I don't tell them that whole thing that I just told you. What I tell them is this, you know, when people get tired of hearing, because nowadays you hear a lot of people talking about athletes, right? This is what a pro athlete does and athletes do this. You got people who make work, athlete workouts with people who don't even play a sport, right? In the gym. And then you got people who uh, speak about, what athletes do, how athletes think, I mean, the athlete mindset, or how to perform like an athlete even if you don't play a sport. And the thing is, when anyone who wants to learn about the athlete mindset, they get tired of hearing from all the coaches and the trainers and the uh, entourage members and the people who stood on the sidelines and the reporters and all the people who study athletes, and they want to hear from the actual athletes, like the people who was actually out on that field or out on that court doing it, who can also articulate and explain it. All right, that's when my phone rings. Right, so that's what I do for those of y'all who want a better understanding of that. And today's topic, anyway, outside of all of that, the topic is you are thinking too much. You are thinking too much. In other words, you are hesitating on action. You are not taking initiative because you are out thinking yourself. You're thinking yourself out of action. And this happens to a lot of people, especially once they start taking in more and more information. The challenge that we have the great thing that we have is with this you know, information superhighway that we live on now that we can get access to any information anytime is that we can learn from literally anybody damn there not damn there but literally 24 hours a day we could take in as much information as we had a capacity to take in the problem with having access to so much information is that we have access to so much information which means we could if we wanted to 
always have a reason to not take action because there's something else we can learn, something else we can read, something else we can listen to. And then we end up not doing anything because we're trying to perfect our plans or make sure we know everything, which is impossible because there's always new information coming out before we take action. And then you end up thinking yourself out of action or thinking yourself out of opportunity or taking too long to move yourself to action. And this phrase too long is a relative term, but it's too long if somebody else beats you to the punch. If someone else moves before you and they take the opportunity that would have been yours off of the table, that means you took too long to move. That means you are moving too slow. That means you are thinking too much. And masterclass number 190 in the game group membership, which you can get access to at that link down there or in the description on Facebook, work on your game university. I talked about the topic was what if I fail? You know, people would ask me this question. I would tell people, hey, this is do this and this and this. And sometimes it'd be with basketball players. Sometimes it'd be with business people. And they would say, well, Dre, what if that doesn't work? What well, if I do that move that you showed me and I get my shot blocked? What if I try to you know, do this dribbling move and somebody steals the ball? What if I try out for the team and somebody dunks on me and I don't make the team? What am I supposed to do if things do not go right? Well, I want you to understand something. It's, there are no guarantees in life except, as they say, death and taxes. And even this year, they even push taxes back. So I guess the only thing that's guaranteed is death, right? What you need to understand is that being indecisive and overly cautious, which is what happens when you start overthinking situations because you can't make a decision and you're overly cautious because you know too much about what could possibly go wrong. What happens is you become risk averse. You try to play it safe and then you miss out on opportunity after opportunity, many opportunities which you never even knew were opportunities. You didn't even know they existed because you're thinking yourself out of your own success. It's not thinking yourself just out of action because most of us, if you think about your any successes you've had in life, they probably were preceded by action. Would you agree? Has anybody here ever achieved success by doing nothing? All right, nobody. So every success you had was preceded by some type of action. But if you're overthinking and you become indecisive and you don't take action, well, and you become hesitant and you're procrastinating, how could you possibly create success? Well, that's a trick question. You can't possibly create success if you're not taking action. So today... I'm going to help you get over this challenge of thinking too much and hopefully, hopefully move you into action, which is the fourth principle of this whole work on your game philosophy. And that fourth principle being personal initiative, the other three being discipline, confidence and mental toughness, which I cover all in this book right here. And I have separate books on each one of those subjects, but I'll, we'll get to that later. Don't worry about that for now. Point number one, when your mind sees something, anything and your mind tells you instantly not with your conscious thinking but your instincts tell you that what you're looking at is an opportunity all right those are your instincts talking to you let me tell you something about your instincts they never tell you a lie your instincts will never tell you a lie ever now your conscious mind the part where you process thinking and you decide you kind of think about what to think that part of your mind will lie to you forever it'll lie to you forever in a day if you don't learn to control it but your instincts never, ever will tell you a lie. Now, I want you to understand this does not mean that you should always act on what your instincts say. Because you might be in a conversation with someone, you know, at the gas station and they're being rude to you. And your instincts might say slap them in the face. It probably wouldn't be a good idea. Not these days. You know, maybe back in the day when people were more, a little bit more, I don't know, bloodthirsty. <laughs> but these days, no, don't do that. Because people is just, you know, calling the cops these days. So don't do that. Don't smack anybody in the face when your instincts tell you to do it. But you need to pay attention to your instincts because your instincts are telling you something. And you need to ask yourself, when you, once you notice that your instincts are talking to you, why are my instincts saying this? You might not always have as much time to think about it, but when you have time to reflect, why are my instincts telling me what I'm telling me? My, your conscious mind is not as wise as your instincts. Your conscious mind doesn't pick up on things as easily and as subtly as your instincts pick up on things. Your, your instincts notice everything. You know how they say that 85% or 90% or 70% of communication is nonverbal. You've heard people say that, that the majority of communication is nonverbal. That's because the words that we speak, what you're listening to me say right now, is being processed by your conscious mind. Your conscious mind is deciding if what I say makes sense, if you understand it, if you can apply it, what can, what can you use from what I'm saying? That's your conscious mind thinking. Your instincts are picking up on everything else other than the words that I'm saying. They're picking up on the way that I look, my, my facial expression, my body language, the way that I'm gesturing when I'm talking, whether you, my tone of voice, my, the volume of my voice, the pitch, the way that I'm emphasizing certain words and not emphasizing others, the spacing between my words and my sentences, your instincts are picking up on everything other than the actual words. And your instincts 
are really what make you decide. You might not think about this constantly, but your instincts are what cause you to decide what you believe about everything that you take in. So you right now, what you believe about what you're hearing today, my actual words right now, even when you're looking at me, your instincts are helping you make the decisions, not your conscious mind. It's not the actual words that I'm saying. It's the way that I'm saying it, how I'm saying it, and how you are taking it in, what effect it has on you viscerally. Because I might say something that reminds you of something that I don't have anything to do with, but because I said it and I reminded you, that might make you love this message, it might make you hate this message, it might make you ignore this message. But it's all instinct. Your instincts is picking up on all the un non-verbal rather non-verbal communication is all picked up on by the instant this is how you can get a feel for another person you ever met a person or walk past somebody in the street and you just had a feeling for them that they felt like untrustworthy or something wasn't right about that person or i shouldn't be around this person let me get away from this individual because something about them just don't seem right something was just off about a person it's not because you consciously figured out what it was Sometimes all you can say is, yeah, it's, it's just something off about this person. I don't know what it is, but it's something off about this individual. That's your instincts talking to you. That's your instincts telling you that there's something that you need to be paying attention to. You might not figure it out immediately through your conscious thought because it might your conscious mind needs a little bit more time to process. But your instincts don't need processing time. Your instincts work this fast. Faster than you can even think about it, your instincts tell you things. And since I already told you your conscious mind is not as smart as your instincts, here's the problem, though. With us being human beings and us having these rational thought processes, this is what allows us to dominate the animal kingdom. We could dominate animals and put them in cages in a zoo and control them and move them out of our cities and you know, keep them in the jungles and the safaris. Not because, they're, not because we're bigger, stronger, or faster than animals. Right? There are plenty of animals out there bigger, stronger, and faster than human beings. What we have that they don't have is we have the ability to rationalize and consciously think. We can predict things. Hum animals can't predict Animals live their whole lives off instinct. So if you have a pet, a dog, a cat, I don't know, a lizard, a snake, they live off instinct. 100% everything they do is off instinct. So anything you see, a dog, a dog doesn't overthink. Our dogs don't overprocess information. Our dogs don't hesitate either. Everything they do is completely off instinct. And this is how your dog, any of you has a dog, you know that your dog sometimes knows what you're going to do before you have expressed to the dog that you're going to do it. When you're about to go outside, you're about to leave the house, and the dog is not going with you, the dog seems to know that you're leaving the house and the dog's not going with you. How does it know? I mean, it can't talk. I don't think it understands most of the words that we talk about. It didn't hear you say, I'm about to go to Whole Foods. It didn't hear you say, I'm about to go to work. How does it know? It knows because it pays full attention to you at all times. It's fully attuned to you, and it goes off instinct. It doesn't, doesn't matter what you say. It can read your body language. And there are subtle things that we do in our body language that the dog picks up on that your other humans around you don't even pick up on simply because humans, our brains get clouded up with all this conscious thinking. We're trying to process things and you read three books in the last week. So you're trying to process everything from those books and you listen to two podcasts right now and you just listen to somebody's new mixtape or their album and you just scroll through your whole Facebook feed. So you got all these conscious thoughts going through your mind all jumbled up. It's like a big traffic jam of conscious thinking going on in your mind. And when you're doing that, what happens is your instincts aren't allowed to get through to you because there's this traffic jam. Like any of you been in a traffic jam, probably not now, ain't no traffic in the streets right now. It's a good time to drive. But if you ever been in a traffic jam, you can't get to the place you want to get to because you have all this traffic in the way. Your instincts trying to tell you something. If your conscious mind is too is processing too much, you got too much going on in your head, your instincts can't get through the traffic jam to tell you what you really need to what you really need to hear or allow you to see what you really need to see. So this is how sometimes you can overthink a situation, but your instincts would have told you the right thing to do. You end up doing the wrong thing simply because you were thinking too much. There's too much traffic going on in your mind. This is how, back to the explanation I was given, this is how your dog knows more about what you're going to do than your kids or your mom or your dad or your husband or your boyfriend or your girlfriend knows what you're going to do simply because they, humans, have all these conscious thoughts. Dogs don't have that problem. All right? They don't have that traffic jam. They got a clear road between their instincts and their actions at all times. Human beings, we were born with a clear road between our instincts and our actions when we were babies, but over the time, we learn to talk, we learn to process talking, we learn to read books, we learn to listen to podcasts, and all of a sudden, we got this big traffic jam that never ends in our heads. So the only time that you make a mistake, every time you've ever made a mistake in your life, or let's just say 99% of the time, you made a mistake in your life, it wasn't because you did what your instincts told you to do, it's because you did what your conscious mind told you to do. Your conscious mind can make mistakes. Now, you could be the smartest person in the room, 
you can still make a mistake with your conscious thinking because that's just the way that's just the way our brains are designed as human beings. But your instincts, they will never lead you down. They may lead you to doing something that you may consider rash or irrational, or maybe you shouldn't have did it then or the way that you did it. But they never lead you completely down the wrong path. If you find yourself going the exact wrong direction, that's because your conscious mind told you to do it. Point number two. We're talking about you are thinking too much for those of you who came in the middle of this. Number two thing, I want you to understand that while you can take time to think about things, and somebody might say, well, Dre, I get what you're saying about listening to your instincts and not thinking too much. But look, sometimes in life, you got to you got to think things out. Sometimes in life, you got a tough decision that you have to make and you really got to consider the ramifications of your actions. You got to think about second and third order consequences. I did a whole podcast on that. Didn't come out yet, but it's coming soon where not only do you think about the immediate result of your action, but then a result that comes a week from now, a year from now, the five years from now as a result of that action that you still have to live up to. You got to stand on that action that you took when the second, third and fourth order consequences come. So, Dre, maybe I should think about things. Maybe I should take my time and plan things out. Maybe I should really make sure I'm considering all my options before I take an action. Dre, what about that? <clears throat> You're telling me that I'm thinking too much. I need to act more on instinct and you know, take initiative more often and stop thinking so much. What about the fact that sometimes I just need time to think? What's wrong with taking time to think? Is what some people say. Well, let me answer that question for you. Some things in life can only happen in the moment. Now, while there are times where you'll be able to think, there are times you'll be able to say, you know what, I need a day or two to think about this. There are times where you say, you know what, let me plan this out for about a week before we take action. There are times you say, all right, I know something's going to happen in six months, so I got six months to get ready and strategize and get all my ducks in a row and get everything in order so I can do what I got to do six months from now when that thing pops off, whatever it is. There are times in life when you will have time to think. There are times in life you'll have time to plan and get ready. But there are other times in life, and if you've been alive you know, 18 years or longer, you probably know about this. There are other times in life when you got to act in a moment or you just miss everything. You either do something right now or you do nothing because the opportunity will be gone. You got to act is now or never. I was reading this article by uh, Idris, well not by him, but they were interviewing Idris Elba or Idris Elba. I don't know if it's Idris or Idris, but y'all know who I'm talking about, right? I know him from playing Stringer Bell on The Wire. If y'all never saw The Wire, y'all know who Idris Elba is. You Google him, you know who he is. I-D-R-S. I-D-R-I-S. Yeah. So anyway, it was when he got voted. I don't know what magazine this was men's magazine men's health or something he got voted by the readers the sexiest man on the planet or one of those categories he got just the most attractive man and they interviewed him and they were just asking him about you know how he felt about being named the most attractive man and this and that and he said well they asked him first how do you deal with you know when you're out and you want to talk to a woman or our men who read this magazine idris they want to know what is your advice? Since you're, you have been voted the sexiest man alive, what's your advice to men out there who are listening to this interview who want to know how they can get better at talking to women? If they see a woman that they're interested in they're out at the coffee shop or they're at the mall or wherever they are, they see a woman they're interested in, but they haven't done too well just approaching women, what are they supposed to do? What can they do? So here's what Idris Elba said. He said, most of the time, men mess up their own opportunity. And you know how they mess up their opportunity? And the ladies who are listening to this, y'all can tell me if I got this right or not. A man will be out, right? He sees the woman that he's interested in. He notices her. She notices him. They make eye contact. Your instincts tells you right there if she's interested or if she's not. Now, as soon as you make the eye contact, you know if she's interested in, she would listen to you if you approach, or she's not interested in you approaching at all. You can tell just off that eye contact, and it takes less than one second. It tells you everything you need to know. Here's what happens when that man gets that eye contact, and it looks like she's interested now he got to think about it. Now he thinks, hmm, was she really looking at me? Now she got to look at him again. Now he got to look again. Now he got to start thinking about, oh, what should I say? Now he got to think about, well, what if she has a husband? What if she has a boyfriend? What if she's not interested? Oh, she got somebody with her. Now I got to approach her with another friend. What am I supposed to do now? And then they think about it, think about it, think about it, think about it. And by the time the man finally takes action, he has ruined the moment. And this is the part that Idris said, that part in the middle, I, I put in that part. But he said a man sees a woman, he's interested, and he takes so long to think about it, he's processing and trying to decide what to say, that by the time he finally approaches, the energy of the moment is gone, and he just blew his opportunity. And this is what Idris said. He said, just approach the woman. Next time you see a woman you're interested in, just approach her and say the first thing that's on your mind, and just talk to her straight up. 
because, and he didn't go on and elaborate, but I went and took that little quote and I extrapolated it out to what I'm about to explain to you right now. That if you just say what's on your mind, even if you say something that you might think is banal or dumb or silly, you have no idea how she's going to take it. The thing is, is not the actual words that you say that she's reading. What she's reading is your level of confidence and your level of boldness and your level of personal initiative and just walking up and striking up that conversation as soon as you saw her look at you you went straight to it you didn't think about it you didn't hem and haul you didn't keep looking at it to make sure she was really looking at you to make sure you got the signal that you thought you got the first time that you know you got because your instincts told you what it was the first time you looked at it see when you take all that time to think about it and maybe i'm not sure should i say something should i not by the time you finally say something the whole energy has gone you're the the i don't even know what word to use on it but the, the confidence that you would have displayed had you just immediately taken action, you blew it because you took too long to think about it. In life, it works the exact same way. Or it's, just, it's not just about approaching some woman at a coffee shop. In life, when you see an opportunity and you know it's an opportunity because your instincts are telling you it's an opportunity, you got to move on it immediately. Because sometimes that opportunity will not be available tomorrow. The opportunity will not present itself again next week. The opportunity will not sit around and wait for you to get ready to finally do something with it. The opportunity is available now or never. And here's the thing with many people is you have trained yourself through your conscious mind talking too much to hesitate on opportunities so often that it's become just a way of life for you. And you don't even notice immediate opportunities anymore. You don't even notice that they're there because you're so used to taking your time, waiting, no, delaying not doing things in the moment but just waiting until you finally get around to doing things here's the problem if life is moving faster than you move then you lose let me say that again that rhymes i didn't mean it for i didn't plan for it to rhyme but it rhymes if life is moving faster than you move comma you lose and typically we need more time to think than the amount of time life is usually willing to give us and the time that you take to think or you better make sure you're thinking about something that's actually going to be available to you because by the time you come up with a solution, the opportunity may be gone. It doesn't even matter that you thought about it. Just go do the first. When you see an opportunity, you got to move on it. Even if the action that you take or the thing that you say to the girl is the wrong action or you say the wrong thing or what you consider to be the wrong thing, the fact that you approach confidently, the fact that you took advantage of that opportunity boldly will more than make up for saying the wrong words because as everyone knows as i said earlier on everyone agrees that the majority of communication is non-verbal right so when you go and approach someone that you're interested in or someone you want to talk to or you go to a conference and you see some business person that you look up to and you want to introduce yourself is not having the perfect words that is going to make that conversation go or make it a great interaction is the energy with which you speak is the energy that you bring with you when you approach that means a whole lot more than the actual words that you say which makes this whole thing funny when sometimes men, when they're trying to figure out how to talk to girls, they go get sign up for some course or buy some book where people teach you what? What to say. If she does this, say this. If she says that, say that. It's not the words that you say that matter, though. It's the confidence that you use when you say it. Now, if you, get, if you know exactly what you're going to say and you're confident in what you're saying, now you're going to have a high level of confidence. No matter, even if what you say is stupid, you think it's great. If you think it's great, you're going to be confident and you're going to approach, you're going to approach confidently. You're going to present yourself confidently and people are going to read you as confident. Even if what you say is the dumbest thing they ever heard, they're going to look at you as a confident individual because of the way that you said it. It's not what you said, it's how you said it. Everybody following me so far? And this is the same thing that applies when you're speaking to somebody. You could be speaking to an audience of people. This could be when you're giving a presentation on online, on a, a web stream like I'm doing right now. Anything that you do, if you play basketball, if you work at a job, anything that you do, it's the way that you present yourself and your work that determines how people look at it is not the actual work or what you say in the actual work most of the time. Now, you do want to have good work and you do want to say something that makes sense. But most of the time, the main thing that people buy is your confidence and your energy behind what you do. As the saying goes, 90, 93% of communication nonverbal, but it means only 7% of your words, 7% of what matters is your actual words, which is not much. Point number three. The topic, if y'all came in the middle of this, is you are thinking too much. Point number three. Life only remembers one thing about you. All right, life does not remember everything about you. And when I say life, I mean whoever's around when you're not around anymore. 
Steve Burks and Devin So over there on Facebook. What up? Only thing life remembers about you is what you did. Everybody heard me? Life does not remember what you thought about. doesn't remember what you planned on doing. It doesn't remember what you could have done. It doesn't remember the opportunities that you passed up. It does not remember anything else. Whatever else you want to fill in the blank with. The only thing life is going to remember about you is what you did. Any of you ever been to a, a uh, what do they call those things? A cemetery. Yeah, that's what it's called. Any of y'all be ever been to a cemetery? On a, in a cemetery, if somebody has a tombstone, not a, and not every grave site has a tombstone, but those that have a tombstone, the tombstone is not that big, right? How big is the, the tombstone is big enough to put the person's name, the year they were born, the year they died, and they could put maybe what, like one sentence maybe about that person? And that's it. That's it. Any of you, if you, any of you who's old enough, you remember the newspaper when they used to have the obituaries? The obituary, for those of you who don't know, that's like a little blurb that got put in the newspaper when somebody passed away and their family would write to the newspaper and give the little blurb and they would put it in the newspaper just to recognize and acknowledge, show respect to the person who passed away. An obituary is like maybe four or five sentences. That's it. Your whole life reduced to four or five sentences. 80 years four or five sentences and guess what none of those sentences is going to be covering what you thought about doing what you are about to do what you could have did what you would have did and what you should have did that ain't going on your obituary and ain't going on your tombstone nobody's going to talk about that at your funeral all they're going to talk about is what you did if you did anything now if i got that wrong somebody could like anybody been to a funeral and they talked about what somebody could have did now i ain't been i ain't never heard that at a funeral you ever seen what somebody should have did on their tombstone or what somebody would have did in the, um, you know, the little pamphlet you get when you walk into the funeral parlor? I've never seen that. If any of you have, let me know. I've never seen it. Thinking is a good thing, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not telling you that thinking is a bad thing. All right? Thinking is a good thing. Smart people think. Okay? But just like sleeping, thinking has its place in life. All right? Sleeping is a good thing. But at some point, you got to wake up out of that sleep and you got to go live life. It's like thinking is a good thing, but at some point you got to take some action. All right, you can't just spend your whole life. I'm thinking about it. I'm trying to decide. I don't know yet. I need time. I got to strategize. I got to plan. I got to make sure I got everything right. Listen, at some point you got to do something because the only thing people are going to remember is not what you thought about because we can't read thoughts. We can only judge actions. There's a time in life to wake up. There's a time in life to push away from the dinner table. It's time in life to you know, get out of the bathroom. It's time to eat. It's time to go to the bathroom. It's time to sleep. It's time to think. It's time to wake up, get out the bathroom, stop sleeping, stop thinking, and take action. And the people who make things happen in this world, the people who we know, the people whose names we know, the people who after they pass away, people still talk about them, it's not because of how much thinking they did. It's because of, what they, it's because of the actions that they took and the results that they produced through those actions. And remember... Even if you screw up on an action, you take an action because you're like, all right, Dre said I got to take action. And you take action and you mess up on the action. Guess what you can do to fix it? Take another action. Take another action. And you learn on the way. You make your adjustments. You learn on the way. You make your adjustments and you repeat, wash, rinse and repeat. Understand that experience only comes through action, ladies and gentlemen. Any of you ever had... And a lot of people will come to me and they'll say something like, well, Dre, how do I, I'm trying to get more experience in playing ball. I want to get more experience. People ask me, how do I get experience creating content or doing live streams or talking to audiences? I say, well, you just got to start doing it. And they're like, well, I'm not that good at it. And I'm like, exactly. That's why you got to start doing it because the first one's going to be trash and the 10th one might be trash. The 97th one, you might still be trash. But the thing is, you get experience every time you do something. Even if you're terrible at it, every time you do it, you get experience. You can't get experience by watching you can't get experience from the sideline. You can't get experience from watching somebody else do something. You can learn by watching somebody else, but you can't get experience by watching. You get experience through doing. And usually we don't call it experience unless we mess up. It's not really experience if everything works. Like if everything I ever did in my life always worked, you wouldn't be listening to me because you wouldn't be able to relate to my life because all of us have had things mess up. All of us have failed. All of us have come up short. And it's the coming up short and the failing and messing up and being trash at some point, that's what lends to experience because now we got a story to tell. Now we know what works and what doesn't work, or at least we know one thing that doesn't work. We know not to make that mistake again. Now let me try this one. Maybe this will work. That didn't work. All right, now we know about that. That doesn't work. Now we know about that. But now out of each one, 
there was this little part work and this little part work and this little part work. Let me put these three together. Then you start to get a little bit of success and then you get better and better and better. And eventually you become good. And eventually you get to the point that other people are seeking you out for that thing. That you, and you're like, and they're like, well, I don't know how to start. I don't know what to do. And you're like, why don't you just begin? And, you, and they say, well, I'm trash at it. And then you think to yourself, well, I used to be trash too, but I kept going. I kept trying. I kept iterating. I kept learning. I kept adjusting based on my experience. And now I'm actually good to the point that other people want me to help them. They don't understand. I was just as trash as they were at one point, but I kept going. And it's the same thing that you can do. But you can't get there if you're just thinking about it or planning it or writing it down or you know, waiting for your opportunity. There's no such thing as waiting for opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. Opportunity exists at all times. Waiting for opportunity is an oxymoron. If you're waiting, then it's not an opportunity. Our opportunity exists at all times. It's always present. It's omnipresent. It's just a matter of you noticing it and doing something with it. Now, if you don't notice it and you do nothing with it, then to you, I guess it wasn't an opportunity. As they say, if a tree falls in the forest and no one's there to hear it, doesn't make a sound. The answer is no. Because nobody heard it, then there's no sound. If you didn't see it, there was no opportunity. You just missed it. Somebody else took it. It was an opportunity for them. It wasn't an opportunity for you. Now, with all that being said, I'm going to recap this topic. And if anybody has a question, I don't know if I saw any questions come through. If anybody has a question on this topic, the topic is you are thinking too much. If you have a question about mindset, uh, mental toughness, discipline, confidence, personal initiative, taking action, getting started on what you do, going from trash to actually being good and actually being able to teach other people, go ahead and leave it in the comments. I want to answer any questions that y'all got while I'm waiting for the questions. And before I recap, I'm going to tell you about these two books that I got in front of me. This one right here is The Mirror of Motivation. It's the self-guide to self-discipline. I wrote this book so that you can start being the person who you need to be so you can do what you need to do and have the life that you want to have. And I should have told you at the beginning, this book is free. Now, you do not have to pay for this book. I've already bought the book. I will ship this book to you worldwide. All you do is take care of the shipping by going to mirrorofmotivation.com. Tell me where to ship it. Of course, tell me your name so we know what to put on the envelope. Tell me where to ship the book, and we will get this book shipped out to you worldwide. Again, it's called The Mirror of Motivation, The Self-Guide, The Self-Discipline, so you can be who you need to be, do what you need to do, live how you want to live, which means you will finally start fulfilling your potential and never feel like you are not doing enough in your life or being enough in your life. This book right here is the Overseas Basketball Blueprint. I wrote this book for anybody who wants to play professional basketball overseas. I came out of a D3 school where I walked on, hustled my way into a nine-year career. I had no contacts, no connections, no agents, didn't know anybody who played overseas, made a career out of it. Why? Because I'm a hustler. But you ain't got to do everything that I did. I wrote this book so that you don't make the mistakes that I made. This is a 237-page book. This book will save you a ton of time, a ton of money, and a ton of energy, and it will tell you exactly what to do if you want to have a professional basketball career where you travel the world, get paid, and play basketball for a living. I'm telling you, if there's a better job, anybody who's watching this right now has a job that is better than playing basketball for a living, leave a comment and tell me what that job is. And none of you should be saying anything because it ain't no job better than playing basketball for a living. Trust me. I'm an entrepreneur now, and playing basketball for a living was a better job than what I do to this very day. That's just a fact. All right, so now all that being said, go to balloverseas.com. You get this book free also. I will ship this book to you worldwide. For anyone who wants to play ball overseas, go to balloverseas.com. Tell me where to ship the book. I will get this book out to you. We just ordered another 50 of these books to make sure we can ship them out ourselves because the whole shipping situation is way delayed right now because of the whole COVID-19. But either one of these books, you will get it shipped. We're going to make sure you get it. Balloverseas.com, mirrorofmotivation.com. So let's see what we got going in the comment section. I take the comments and questions on the first come, first serve basis. So if you posted one, I am going to answer it. You just got to let me get to any ones that came in before yours. And let's see where we're at. Hope everybody's had a great week. It is 6.51 p.m. Eastern on a Friday. So everybody made it through another week. I hope you all are staying sane, uh, quarantined or sheltered in place or whatever we're calling it. C. Reed X, I appreciate you. He said, I'm a goat. I can use that as a, a testimonial. We'll put that on the, on the site somewhere. I'm an ingo. What's good? Let's see. Ash, A.S. Lee. Ash Lee, seven. No, Ash Lee, 23. Said, Dre, what's your morning routine? Man, I've done, I've done a master class on that subject, what my morning routine is. I actually wrote an article about it as well. But just to give it to you really quick, see if I can do it in less than one minute. I wake up probably around uh, 3.50 a.m. 
The first thing I do is yoga. No, the first thing I do is I drink a whole liter of water. So this bottle right here, I drink like six of these a day. So I drink a whole liter of water. Then I do yoga, which takes about 10 minutes. Then I work out. So that could be running, bike riding, or a weight room. And right now, I can't even use a gym. So I do stuff in, at home, like stability workout at home. Then it's shower, shave, get dressed. While I'm doing that, I'm usually listening to podcasts or audio book. Then I take a walk. That takes about 20 to 30 minutes. Then I have a protein shake and then I do meditation. And I'm looking at my goals. I'm looking at my objectives, things that I need to achieve. That takes me another, I, that takes another 10 to 20 minutes. And then it's work. From that point is work until around about five and I eat lunch. Then I have a pro, I said the protein shake. Then I eat lunch around 11, 12 o'clock Eastern. Then it's work. And then I take another walk, probably around 5, 6 o'clock, and I'm doing this live stream at 6.15, and I'm usually laying down in the bed around 7.15. Laying down in the bed around 7.15. I go to sleep probably around 8 o'clock. That's my daily routine. So that should answer your question. Devin, so I get a question. Matias says, should I listen to only one mentor? I would say choose between no more than five. I would say three to five mentors is how many is enough. The question on Facebook was, should I have only one mentor to listen to? I would say three to five simply because not every, no person talks about everything. So, for example, I could have someone that I listen to for if I wanted to learn how to play ball, then I have somebody I listen to for basketball. Then it'd be somebody maybe for family stuff. Then it'd be somebody for business. Then it might be somebody for if I got another hobby. If I like you know, re repairing old cars, I might have somebody for cars. So no one person is going to go deep in all of those topics. So I would suggest you pick no more than five people total for what you're going to be following and listening to, depending on what your focus is at that point in your life. I got another question on Facebook. Devin says, what podcast would I recommend? Devin, if you could leave another comment and tell me what areas you're focused on, then I can give you a better answer. But I can't just recommend podcasts generally because just like people, every podcast is focused on a certain subject. So tell me what you're interested in, what you're focused on right now, and I'll tell you what I can tell you. Let's see what we got over on Instagram. Tim says, how do you detox your mind? Well, what kind of, tox what kind of toxics do you, toxins do you have in your mind right now that you need to detox? I don't need a detox from my mind. But if you need a detox, you got to tell me what kind of toxins you got in there right now. And then I can give you a better answer. I need a little bit of, uh, what do we call it? Context for why you're asking that question. So if somebody else has a question, I'm going to wait a minute. I asked both one person on Facebook, one on Instagram to give me some more context of why they're asking the question that they're asking so I can give you a better answer. So when you all ask me a question, be detailed, but don't be long. <laughs> so that's the challenge. So get, get some detail to get some context to why you're asking the question. But at the same time, don't write like a whole paragraph because that takes too long to read and we ain't got, we ain't got time for that. So while I'm waiting for those two follow ups and see if anybody else got a question, Balloverseas.com, you want to play basketball overseas. Mirrormotivation.com, you want to be the person you need to be so you can live the life you want to live. Core G1 says, how do you get rid of a same mindset that keeps producing the same thinking or thoughts? You got to put some new information in there. So it's kind of like, like this Gatorade bottle right here. If let's say you put some orange juice or not, let's use something else, like some cranberry juice in this bottle, right? You filled it up with cranberry juice and you drank all the juice. When you finish drinking it, any of you ever drank fruit juice before, you know it's going to be some residue still in the bottle from that fruit juice, right? So how do you clean out this bottle from that? How do you clean that fruit juice out of this bottle? What you have to do is you start running some clean water into the bottle. But just because you filled it up with clean water, does, is the bottle clean? No, because you still got residue that's mixed in with the water. So you got to keep the water running, keep running clean water into this bottle eventually it flushes out all the old water and eventually all you have is clear water in the bottle. So what you would need to do, uh, the person who asked this question, Chlor G1, how do you get rid of it is you got to start flooding your mind with different materials. So if you keep producing the same thinking and the same thoughts, it's probably because you're giving yourself the same inputs. That's why you're getting the same outputs. I mean, this is just a law of science. As they say, if you keep doing the same thing, expecting different results, that's the definition of insanity. If you keep getting the same result, that's because you're doing the same things. You're following the same process. So you need to start putting different materials in your mind. So whatever you've been putting in your mind, stop that and do something different. 
all right, until you find a formula that works best for you. So over on Facebook, Devin says, I'm interested in desire to, to achieve more and finding your purpose. Man, that's a, very, that's a very broad category. What I would say for that, I would suggest that you look into some books. I wouldn't even say podcasts because a podcast is more like, I mean, people do podcasts maybe once or twice a week or some people do podcasts every day. And sometimes it's just a conversation and talking to one person. The next time you're talking to a completely different person. The next time is a different person. You want something that goes a little bit more deep. You're talking about achieving more and finding your purpose. You want something that gets a little bit more granular. I would suggest you read a book and a book, a good book for that. Finding your purpose. Man, there are so many. I would suggest you read Mastery by Robert Greene. That's the one that I would start with. Mastery by Robert Greene. Then I will tell you to look into uh, The Success Principles by Jack Canfield. He's the author of the Chicken Soup for Soul series. Then I will suggest you look into The Law of Success by Napoleon Hill. I will start with those three. And then I'll give you one more bonus is Awaken the Giant Within by Tony Robbins. So those four. Mastery, Success Principles, The Law of Success, Awaken the Giant Within. Read all four of those books. If you read them already, read them again. Oh, definitely appreciate you, Devin. I appreciate the comment. So over on all right so tim says you didn't phrase that right yes yeah, so i'm asking you to rephrase it so i understand what you're asking uh emanner says r kelly was one of my favorites but people keep making fun of him what i got to do with anything we talking about here <laughs> kvn says dre would you choose a weak school to hoop to get experience or a tough one with no playing time i have actually addressed this i did a whole podcast on this exact question would you go to a weaker school or a stronger school it the answer is generally it depends where are you trying to go in basketball? Are you trying to just maximize and get playing time and move on with your life? Excuse me, after school? Or are you trying to move up in levels and advance and be something as a basketball player? If A, you're just trying to have fun and then you're going to move on to a different area of life, not basketball, then go somewhere where you can play a lot and score all the points and be the man and you can have fun. And then when it's over, you could go be a, you know, you can go sell insurance or start a business or be a photographer. Now, if you're trying to become a basketball player, like a full-fledged player in the professional level, then you should always choose the highest possible level available to you because you're going to get your ass kicked, but you need that so that you can get better. So it depends. It depends on what you're trying to do with yourself. Are you just having fun? Are you, trying to, are, you being, are you ambitious in this game? And there's nothing wrong with being either one, but the way that you would decide is based on that. So I can't tell you until I have the answer to that question. Uh... KVN said, when you need experience, well, what do you need the experience for? Why do you need experience? What do you need it for? You need it because you want to have fun or you need it because you're trying to advance. Like after this school, you're trying to go to a bigger school or to a higher level and you're trying to go to the next level, next level. Give me some context of where you're at. Are you in high school, college? Tell me, give me some context so I know exactly what you're talking about. I can give you a much better answer. You give me better context. C. Reed says, in basketball, is confidence the most important skill? Confidence is important, but confidence only comes from actually having you no know, actual skill. You know, dribble, shoot, pass. If you can't do that, you can be as confident as you want. You ain't going to last too long. I knew players who would run around. I mean, I came up playing ball on playgrounds. I played probably 10,000 pickup games. So in pickup, you always go and run into people who are really confident. But that don't mean they're good. So you could be confident, but if you have no game, you go against somebody who has game and confidence, uh, you're going to get they're going to mop the floor with you. So make sure you have both and you get confidence in basketball from working on your game. Uh, Tim says, how do you clear your mind daily and focusing on good, positive things? Man, uh, Tim, your questions are very broad, but I would suggest that you go to work on your game university and listen to the daily masterclass called work on your game. And I guarantee you that will start happening to you in so short of a time. You won't even know what happened. Go to work on your game university. That'll help you out right there. All right, so let me see if we got any other questions I need to address. All right, so everybody, thank you for your time on this live. MirrorMotivation.com, this is a free book. BallOverseas.com, this is a free book. You can get either one. You can get both. If you got neither, then I don't know why. You, you hate success. You hate winning. You hate achievement. But if you love success, winning, and achievement, MirrorMotivation.com, BallOverseas.com. I will be doing a live stream every single day. For those who didn't know, I'm going live every day at 6.15 p.m. Eastern until, as long as, until you hear me say I'm not going live anymore, I'm going live every day at 6.15 p.m. Eastern on Facebook, that's Facebook slash work on your game, for those who don't know, and Instagram at Dre Baldwin, for those who don't know. That's where I go live every single day. 
Uh, Kavion said, I mean, you said you need live games to improve a hooping. That's what I meant by experience. That's why I asked you it. Well, you can play in live games at the playground. Uh, you ain't got to choose a school to play in a live game. So everybody, work on your game university is where you get your first two weeks free access to the game group membership. That's where you get all of my best material, my daily masterclass that comes out every single day. And we got an app that is exclusive for members. So you get it on your phone every day, but it's an exclusive app. It's not one that you can get from anybody else. That's at Work On Your Game University. You already saw the free books. I got some more great stuff on the way. We're building it out right now. Um, <laughs> trust me, we got a lot coming. Stay tuned, stay close, work on your game. Have a great weekend. Dre all day.